Good, every, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for joining me, those that are already on the line and those that will come on later. I am Elder Geneva James, and this is Lift Him Up Ministries. I would like for you to join me every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for an encouraging word from the Lord. This ministry is dedicated to help those that are struggling with the issues of life. And so today our topic is strength through confession. So grab your Bible and a cup of coffee and let's dive into the word of the Lord. <clears throat> I start out with the word of prayer. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for um, your grace and your mercy. I thank you for those that will see this message, those that will see it later, and those that will share it. I thank you, and I give you praise. I ask you, Holy Spirit, if you would just have your way on this morning. In Jesus' name, bless those that are listening. Hallelujah. Touch hearts today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, I said the topic is strength through confession. So when you are going through different issues, even if, if it's substance abuse, whatever the case may be, when you recognize that you need help and you confess that even to yourself that, oh, I need help. Oh, I am an alcoholic. Oh, I am a drug addict. Oh, I am a, 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 a victim of, substance, I mean, of uh, domestic violence. Whatever the issue is, and you confess it, and then you begin to... Um, Seek the Lord about it. So this message is for those that who are fighting substance abuse, whatever weight that they are carrying. This message is for you. So you'll find that confession of your problem is the start of deliverance. I read from you Psalms chapter 30, 32 verses 3 through 4. And I'm reading from the NIV Bible. Uh, this is his David. He says, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. So this verse describes someone in a, a lethargic condition. His bones are wasting away, and his strength was sapped, as in the heat of summer, and God's hand was against him. So when you're going through these different issues, these different weights, that things that are you are carrying, uh, it, 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 it puts you in a lethargic condition. Your strength is sapped. You're just wasting away. So now you may say, well, what was the reason for his affliction? This was David I'm talking about. David, good, good David. Thank you for those that are joining me this morning, um, Sister Pharrell. And so his affliction was, he, you know, he, he had sinned against the Lord. And so the content of this passage make, makes it clear that David, he was keeping silent. He was keeping silent about a weight, a, a sin he had committed. So what happens when people hide their different weights? I'm going to say weights because when you're burdened down with whatever you have done, it's a weight. And and so and do you now or have you struggled or have you ever felt, you know, like David did, like the person above? It is debilitating, exhausting, paralyzing, this sapping of strength because you have no strength. For those that are uh, addicted to alcohol or whatever, you, you, probably this morning you have no strength because you might may have been drunk last night, maybe drank too much, and so your strength is sapped. Hallelujah. And it keeps you powerless to fight the en enemy. So when you're like that, it's the op opposite of I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it leaves us tired and emotionally drained. But there is a way out. Again, Psalms 32, verses 5 through 7. He said, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions 
to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So see, that was the start of him when he asked God, when he confessed his sin and when he confessed it to God. And so that was the way, the beginning of the way he was out of that. So see, when he kept silent, again, his bones just wasted away and his strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. But we'll see that there were four specific benefits to when David acknowledged his um, sin. And he didn't cover it up. He didn't cover up his iniquity. And he confessed his transgressions to the Lord. He uh, forgiveness, verse 5, he said, he said, God forgave him for, from the guilt of his sin. Before David confessed it, God didn't forgive him. Uh, so, and then discovering let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. This is to the Lord. This verse teaches that the only way to find God is through forgiveness of, of sin. And forgiveness of sin only comes through acknowledgement and confession of sin. So that's where you, he got his spiritual strength. He says, surely when the mighty water rise, they will not reach him. You know what this is like. At times, you know, when these weights come on you, rushing in like a flood, it overwhelms you. But but we, but when you confess to the Lord, he lifts you up. Amen. So um, to, to summarize, hiding our weights, whatever your weight is, do not hide it. Because the Lord knows anyway. He knows. And so we actually cannot hide them from the Lord, from God. He knows and he refused. And when you refuse to confess them, it brings about spiritual sickness, loss of strength against, um, you know, any other attacks of the enemy. Amen. So, my friend, whoever I'm talking to, it may be difficult, but it is important that you make a full confession and discuss closure of your struggle, whatever you're struggling with, whatever your weight, what, whatever is weighing, weighing you down, you must disclose it to God first. Amen. As all weights, uh, all burdens, uh, all bondages, uh, you know, when, you, when you're overcome by different things that you may be addicted to or whatever it is, it's, you know, it's a weight. But it also must be you know, confess to God. Hallelujah. So if you're hiding bondage from anyone, from maybe your spouse, then this is deception. So this needs to be confessed before you can express, expect real lasting victory. Just confess it. Say, I need your help. Um, I need you to pray for me. You know, you, you talk to God first. However, while confessing it to God, you must be total, complete. You must immediately confess it to others. It requires wisdom because you don't want to tell your problems to, to anybody. You must discern who, you know, you are confessing your sin to. Or whoever, whatever you are struggling with, I, mean, I meant to say. Whatever you are struggling with, you, uh, you, you, you will find one person who uh, you could be honest with, you know. Uh, and so... You don't know, tell you know everybody. So if you are thinking about making a confession to someone, you might be apprehensive. So most times, confession is not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do, but you have to contemplate. You say, "Well, I know I need help. I know I'm struggling with this," and so you know you say, "Well, who can I talk to?" Talk to the Lord first, and then there may be that one that you can trust, that you can talk to. If you have felt the consequences of hiding your problem, and you now see the value of fully confession, confessing, but you are afraid, do it afraid. Do it afraid. Because God wants you to be free. He wants you to be free of all bondage. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't want you tangled up. In, in, in any type of bondage. Confession is a necessary part of victory. So don't put it off. Don't put it off. 
in uh, later on in your readings uh, in First Samuel chapter seven verses two through eleven, the Israelites they were victorious over their enemies. So think about it. Can you see some ways that you can be victorious over your enemy? Your enemy is anything that has you in bondage, not, not necessarily a person, but your enemy be, could be whatever you are struggling to get away from, whatever it is, whether it's drugs, alcohol, um, whatever, that's your enemy. And so can you see some ways that you can be victorious? I talked about it before a few uh, weeks back. I talked about radical amputation. So rad radical amputation is to pluck it off, to throw it away, to, to hack it off. I mean, immediately when you confess, that's when you, that's radical amputation. Not like uh, you're physically, physically amputating something. But radical amputation is just throwing it off, throwing off that weight, hallelujah, and just telling the Lord to help you to keep it off. That's radical amputation. Where are you now? What steps are you in? Have you radically amputated or are you rationalizing and, and looking for excuses, making excuses? Many of us hide our Whatever it is, whatever our weight is, whether it's drunkenness or whatever it is, from our families and friends. And sometimes we lie to our bosses at work and cover up the fact that we're intoxicated or suffering from a hangover. I'm telling you, that that happens. That happens. They make up uh, all types of excuses. Some people say some, one time some, a person said, that their father had died so many times they forgot they said that the father had died. So they make up all type of excuses. Okay. That's in uh first first John one and nine. Um you know what we let me see first John one and nine. Um just uh just look to Jesus, look to him. And he is the answer. He is the answer. He is the answer to all our problems. Hallelujah. Look to him because he, he will help us. He will keep us. Hallelujah. Do all things. Thank you, Lord. Again, many of us hide, hide, just hide. Just hide behind baggage. We have different baggage that we hide behind. But we don't want Jesus. God does not want us to hide. He wants us to confess our whatever it is to Him, and He is the way out. He is the one that will help us. And so, when we go to work, there may be some. Then that may be some in the ministry that that hide their drinking from the church or from their pastors. Many of us deceive ourselves that we are okay and that we need to slow down. Whatever the case is, we are not seeking to hide our problems anymore to be set free. So again, I want to talk about confession, confessing whatever it is, confessing. God said he's faithful and just, hallelujah, to forgive us, hallelujah. So we, we are talking about strength through confession. And so this morning, uh, I won't be before you long, but I will be with you every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And I pray that you will join me and tell someone else about it because we have a heart for those who are struggling with different in different areas, whatever it is, um, whether it's uh, substance abuse. What, again, we you know people struggle from from all types of things, and so. I would pray that you would join me and tell someone else. And and um, I this this um, scripture here in Hebrews twelve and one, it talks about weights. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sins that so easily entangles, and let us run with perse perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us 
fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we uh, know since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything, every weight, throw it off. Like I said, radical amputation. Radical amputation is when you quickly throw away that thing. When you confess, you say, well, oh, I believe that uh, I have a drinking problem. I believe that I have a drug problem. I believe that I shouldn't be uh, 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 continuing to be abused. And then you do something about it. That is ra radical amputation. You got to throw it off right then. Amen. And so then those that uh, may need counseling, I have a person here, uh, Wendy Anderson. She's a group facilitator, and uh, she receives people with substance abuse problems. She uh, has services in residential and intensive outpatient and enhanced outpatient services. She's a certified alcohol and drug counselor. She has a BS degree and a master's, and you can contact her at Area code 313-757-5056. Again, uh, her name is Wendy Anderson. 313-757-5056. I'm going to repeat it one more time. When, Wendy Anderson, 313-757-5056. She's a, a counselor. And so I will be providing different um, uh people that you may uh, contact for whatever type of problem that you may be having, that you're going through. And again, we know that <clears throat> strength comes through confession. Because when, when that's how I received my strength, when I thought about it, I said, oh, well, I am an alcoholic. And so from that moment on, that's, that, that's where I gained my strength from. Because when you confess and then you are seeking, seeking how you, can, you may be helped, who can help you? And so, again, strength through confession. Strength through confession. Do not be afraid. Just do it afraid. Amen. So today I, I'm just, I was just, you know, introducing it again. And I will be every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. I thank you for those that have joined me this morning. I pray that the Lord has... Um, Con will continue to bless you, and I pray for those that may see it that has these different types of problems that they will reach out to me. They can reach out to me. They can uh, down, uh, direct message me for uh, you know for prayer or uh, whatever. And so I thank and praise God, Hallelujah, for each one of you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for those that join me. Pastor Carol, Pastor uh, Latanya Laws, Betty Nelson, Barbara, Lydia, uh, Evangelist Edmonds. I thank you so much, and I will. I was just introducing again myself today, so I will be coming back every Saturday morning at ten a.m. Thank you. So you grab your cup of coffee next Saturday morning and join me. Thank you. I thank God for you, Latanya Laws. I thank you for how you, I see you, how you uh, take care of your husband. And that is, that is such a blessing. I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen you as you take care of your husband, as you strength, as he's, you know, you strengthen him. Because by you taking care of him, you are strengthening him and God is strengthening you. He has put that on you. And so I thank you again, Pastor Carol. I thank you so much. I thank you for my niece, Betty Nelson. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Barbara jo uh, Joy, my daughter in the Lord. Thank you, my evangelist, Edmunds. She's my cousin, my friend, my daughter, uh, my, whatever <laughs> she is. I thank God for you. Thank you, uh, Sister Pharrell. I thank God for you. Thank you for joining me. So you all tell someone about it. Every Saturday morning I'll be coming on and, and, and just with an encouraging word from the Lord. I thank you so much. And I will see you next week at 10 a.m. Thank you. Have a blessed day.
拜拜。